Hi, traveller, and welcome to Discovery Tour Viking Age. Just like the brave Scandinavians who left their homes on longships in search of new horizons, a quest for knowledge and a promise of adventure awaits you. For three centuries, adventurers set sail in search of trade, land, and sometimes plunder, changing the world forever in ways that can still be felt today. We call these adventurers Vikings. Some remember them merely as brutal warriors and merciless conquerors. But there is much more to be learned about their rich and complex culture. History will come alive for you through the eyes of those who lived it. Norse merchants looking to make their fortune an Anglo-Saxon monk in search of his life's meaning, and even King Alfred himself. You will follow their deeds, both great and small, as they navigate their eventful time in places known today as England and Norway. But fear not, Discovery Tour Viking Age is a safe, combat-free experience that you can enjoy at your own pace and in your own time. Tapping into the years of research of the Assassin's Creed Valhalla team, its content has been crafted in close partnership with renowned historians and academics. On behalf of the entire development team, we hope you enjoy Discovery Tour Viking Age. May the seas be kind on your journey. Father would be happy to come to the farm, Miss Company. You'll be off raiding for months, not years. Shorter than your trade routes, even. The farm and I will still be here when you return. And return I shall. You had better, or I'll come find you. Trick, do you have any questions for me before I leave? No. I'll take good care of Gunhilda's reputation while you're away. <laughs> I doubt she'll need help, but I'll be glad to know you're here all the same. Come, Dorstein. The market waits for no man. Coming, my love. I'm coming, Gunhilda. him, my love. He's a grown man, not an errant child. Slaves, talk, Gunhilda. If he returns to his family and says we mistreated him, I might find myself in a duel. No duels until you've worked on your swordsmanship. I'm sure to get practice on this expedition with Harold. Our enemies may not fight with blunted blades, but he's promised me the children of Stavanger are far more fierce. The children who struck you as you lay sleeping then ran away laughing? You'll need to keep your wits about you if so.
Wolf, good morning. My mother loved the fine woolen cloak you sold me. The stitching is exquisite. Of course. My wife takes great pride in the needlework, with good reason. You must have been blessed by Heimdall, a vision so keen and hands so steady. Only a talented mother and a very patient husband. Give Alvik a kiss from me next time you see her. I will. Fortune guide you, friend. Just think, after a few raids, we'll have enough silver to leave this place for good. Have you not been happy here? With you, I... With you, I would be happy anywhere. But Stavanger is small. Too small for the grand dreams of the shepherd girl. And why not? Even a worm may one day hold up the sky. <laughs> Come, Mikiel has promised to aid you in my affairs while I'm at sea. You'll have plenty of time to dream while I'm gone. Mikiel, it's a fine day for a little business, don't you think? Get away from here, Thorsty! I won't be seen dealing with an oathbreaker. A what? Keep your voices down. On what grounds do you base this outrageous claim? That is for you and Bjorn to discuss. I can't believe he'd betray me like this. You haven't known Mikiel that long. He has to protect his own reputation first. Not him! Bjorn! Ah, oh, he's always sniffing about your trades like a wild dog. He envies your success and wishes to take it for himself. Well, we won't let him. We've worked too hard for him to take this chance away from us now. We will not let Bjorn get away with this, I swear it. Family's honor. Nothing but the truth. This sale your wife made, that you sold me, is as rotten as your intentions. You wish for me and my men to drown on the open ocean, where our bodies would never be found. Are you a fool? Even if I wanted to leave you stranded and sail west alone, Harold would never allow it. He would make me rescue you, and then we would all be doomed. I don't claim to understand you, Oathbreaker. But your methods are plain. I believe I'll go inform Harold of your duplicity. He should be arriving any moment now. My love, that is no work of mine. I know. This was done by a hand far coarser than yours. Bjorn is trying to sabotage my place on the expedition. You cannot let him accuse you in front of the assembly. No chieftain would ever take you on again. I will not see my parents starve because of Bjorn's lies. 
Then I must gather evidence and bring his falsehoods to light. I will speak with the wives to rally them to our cause, and I will pray to the Haminja for guidance. Our ancestors will give you wise counsel, I'm sure of it. I'll see you outside the assembly. If I were an impulsive oaf, where would I hide the sail? These crates came from Northfall. No local wares then. Tell me, did Bjorn accept any wares these past few days? Surely he did. I carried them myself, wet and nasty they were, smelling as if they'd been stored at the water's edge. Did you happen to see what was inside? No, but it had that damp sheep smell. Wool, I suppose. Thank you, my friend. Hilda's stitching, so beyond plan to take her sail for himself after all. It will need to be more than my word against Bjorn. I'll need people to vouch for me as well.
Even warriors get some playtime. Indeed, it seems that Vikings played board games that involved throwing small objects, such as carved wooden figures. However, the team couldn't find any clear rules for these games. But all hope wasn't lost. The developers of Singapore, Chengdu, and Montreal Studios all came together to invent new rules and mocked up their prototypes in a tabletop simulator. And then probably got really angry when one of them won and the rest lost. Everyone on the team could experience and enjoy the evolving versions of the Orlog 2.0. A first physical prototype was also made using real dice that were painted over. The game of Orlog was reborn, and AC Valhalla's version of the Orlog was so loved by fans that Ubisoft partnered with Pure Arts to produce real-life Orlog sets. Friends, neighbors, listen to me. Bjorn has declared me Oathbreaker, calling my good name into question. We saw the sail. It would have torn in the first gust of wind. That was a sail he bought from Notfall, carried to us in sea-soaked wood. My wife's sail he kept aside for himself, to use once he reached the open sea. I am familiar with Gunhilda stitching. That sail was no work of her hands. What reason does Bjorn have to lie, if revealing the truth is as simple as you say? He hoped to turn Harold against me, to keep me from tomorrow's expedition, to hide the truth until I had already been exiled. If you care for we who will travel with him, this insult cannot go unanswered. He would endanger his crew for a petty grievance. He is unworthy of command. <laughs> Free men of Stavanger, hear me. We must inform the assembly. We must inform Harold Jarl. Only then will our safe return be assured. Are you with me? <laughs> Assembly is about to start. I need to find Gunhilda.
Every detail matters when designing a main character. Personality, backstory, mannerisms. Eivor the wolf kissed must have a noticeable scar and tattoos to represent past events, beliefs and clan affiliation. A mood board was made with various references from Mad Max's Furiosa to Major Motoko Kusanagi in Ghost in the Shell, which allowed concept artists to create compositions, silhouettes, shapes and concepts. Then the character modelers designed the details, hairstyles, tattoos, outfits and even leather stitching, while animators focused on body movement and facial expressions. I found your sail and the mark of the goods Bjorn claimed were ours. His lies are already falling apart. You've done well, but I fear what you have found may not be enough to convince the assembly. What will you do? I will demand a Manyatnata and declare my own deeds as evidence that my word holds more weight than Bjorn's. His reputation cannot compete with ours. A sound plan. I have rallied the wives to our cause and prayed to the gods. Even if you lose, my silver-tongued warrior, the women will make the assembly see reason. I see my heart beats as fiercely as ever. Go now. Reclaim our honor. Forsetti, bless me as I defend my honor. Thorstein Oathbreaker, come to beg forgiveness with your tail between your legs. Men of the assembly, Bjorn claimed the sail I sold him was rotten. But I have found Gunhilda's work hidden, and the sail he claimed was mine came in sea-soaked wood from not far. He sought to ruin my reputation to cover up his poor trade. All so he could claim Harold's favor as his own. Thorstein, if what you say is true, Bjorn is guilty of lying, injury to your reputation and of an arrogance that could have led to the deaths of his crew and yours. Yet he was the one to bring you before the assembly. So now you must choose. How will you defend your honor? We will have combat aplenty across the sea. I choose the Manyapnatur. Come then. My tongue is as sharp as my blade. Declare yourself worthy, if you can. I'm the finest of navigators at home on the sea. Yet the ships and the rations were handpicked by me. True, but I was the first to be picked for this crew. And Harold sought me when he already had you. <laughs> How can he believe you are the better choice? You're playing him for a fool! You're a liar, a thief, and, and a braggart! A, a pest! My worst is still better than you at your best. <laughs> No truer words have ever been spoken. It's a shame I have to step in. It's clear that Thorstein is the one who has been wronged. It is my suggestion that Bjorn be removed from my expedition and exiled 
never to return. His lands and trade goods will be forfeit, gone to pay the costs of finding another navigator with so little time to spare. No, Harald. I... Do not draw more of my wrath upon yourself. I could have named you a murderer and demanded your death. What say you, men of Stavanger? Do you accept the terms put forth by Harald Jarl? We choose exile. Exile. Exile! Then it is decided. Now come, Thorstein. We have a navigator to find. Brother Elrich, awaken. I'd best not keep the abbess waiting. I know the journey was hard on you, so I'll let you sleep through the dawn prayer. Good morning, Abbas. Thank you. Now, the sun is rising. You must not miss Prime. I appreciate the reprieve and the awakening. <laughs> Call it a weakness. Your father's name will be a stone around your neck in Ely. Ah, you have a difficult path ahead of you, I'm afraid. Yes, Abbas. Well, there's nothing to be done about it. Better you prove yourself early than risk becoming the subject of gossip. I will. Abyss? You may break your fast in the kitchen with the others once your prayers are concluded. <laughs> we don't frown on piety here, brother. Should you wish to stay at chapel to pray to the Lord once your duties are concluded, you may be assured that food will be available to you, as long as you go to the kitchen before terse. That's mid-morning? Precisely, my son.
I must not miss Prime. Yet the scriptures... These scriptures are there as a guide, my son. When reading them, we must listen also for the voice of God, guiding us in the right interpretation of his word. But how can we be sure our interpretation is God's will? I know you long to understand the heart of God, Oswine, but you will go nowhere without the ability to listen to your betters. Sister, I was wondering if I might consult you on a somewhat urgent medical matter after this morning's prayers. Of course, Abbas. But would you not be better seeking the aid of Father Bertwold if the case is serious? Father Bertwold would have little experience of the matter I wish to discuss, my dear. Oh, I understand. I'll do my best. Thank you, sister. Pater Noster, qui es in celis, sanctificetur nomen tuum. Adveniat regnum tuum. Fiat voluntas tua, sicut in celo et in terra. Panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis hodi, et dimiti nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris. Et ne nos inducas in tentationem, Sed liberamus amalo. Amen. Time to eat. There she was an abbess. And men used to wear woolen garments. And she rarely bathed in hot water except before Easter, and before the 50th day, and before the day of Christ's baptism. And during the day, she rarely had a meal more than once a day. And from the time of matins, she stayed in church, praying until it was day. And through God's spirit, she herself predicted when she would depart from the world. And she did then depart. And she was buried in the ground for 16 years. And when her body was exhumed again, it was found to be as undecayed as if she had died that same day. And a large wound had been open on her neck when she had been put in the grave. And when she was later exhumed from the grave, 
it had healed, so that there was nothing but a trace. Are you well, Brother Oswin? We must have silence at the Lord's table. <laughs> Brother! Very well. Take him to the infirmary if you must. But the bishop shall hear of your defiance. Tell me, Oswin. Where does it hurt? Everywhere, brother. It's like there's fire in my veins. I will find a way to ease your pain. I promise. Find the monk in charge. Father Bertwald, was it? I hope you can treat that patient yourself. God, in his infinite wisdom, only gave me two hands. The patient speaks of fire in the veins, Father. An uncommon ailment, and one I don't know by heart. The scribes often copy remedies in the scriptorium. You may be able to find something there to aid you. But if not, Sister Winifred will be able to help. Yes, Father. Scriptorium. Right, I remember where that was. Can I help you, brother? Is you capo mode? Well, at the day on be the fuck is on straight. Hear your word. Before yet he ne lera. On the word be word is said, John. No. No. to ask Sister Winifred. Sister Winifred! I've looked but can't find a remedy. Tell me, what is the cure for fire in the veins? A dire challenge indeed. Ox's recipe for pain should aid us here. You will need double brood ale, 
honey, fever few, and wormwood. Though with the raids nearby of late, and the early first frost, you may have trouble with the latter. Is there anything that can replace it? Well, I have heard that dust from a relic can have miraculous properties. We're blessed here in Ellie to have several. Perhaps, if you gather some, the saints will intercede on your patient's behalf. Thank you, sister. God bless you. Double brewed ale, honey, fever few, and the dust of a relic. Should be simple enough. They might have ale in the kitchens. One pound. Three to find. Relics are kept at the back of the chapel. That's two. Halfway done. That broke the ooze how to sort it. Nuns had set up to gather honey round here. Do I just take it? Or careful, brother. You wouldn't want to get stung. The bees jealously guard their golden hoard. I need honey for a remedy. Can you help me? Of course. Take the honey from the table. I'll gather more for the abbess. Thank you, sister. God bless you. That's the third. Now for the last. Feverfew grows best in full sun, and hopefully far from the sister's bees. What does Feverfew look like again? Good morrow, brother. What brings you to the woods? Good morrow. Do you know where I could gather Feverfew or Wormwood? No Wormwood left this season. As for Feverfew, no small white daisies are what you seek. Thank you, brother. God bless you. Um. I have everything I need. Now to mix it.
Sister Winifred brought me the recipe from the scriptorium. And now, I am delighted to discover you know the use of the mixing bench too. Would that God had sent you to me sooner? The infirmary would be in far better shape. I spent many summers mixing poultices for the townsfolk in Canterbury. Then I shall observe and hopefully learn some new tricks of my own. What was the first ingredient in Sister Winifred's remedy? The first ingredient is double brewed ale. Which two ingredients did you gather in the forest? It was feverfew and honey to ease the throat. What did Sister Winifred suggest you substitute for the final ingredient? Dust from a relic is said to cure many ills. There. Done. This should ease Brother Oswin's pain. <coughs> Here, brother. Drink this. It will ease your pain. Thank you, brother. I can feel it working already. How fortunate I am that God sent you in my time of need. Rest now. Soon you'll be back on your feet. Brother Elridge! You must come at once. What's the matter, brother? Do you not hear the bells? The abbess requires your presence at chapel immediately. I'll go as soon as I'm done helping Brother Oswin. No, you must go now. Hurry! I hope the abbess will tell me what's going on. What is happening? Come with me, Brother Elrich. The heathens are on their way, and we must secure the relics before they approach. Then we shall all flee together? No, Brother. The others prepare to fight. Collect the reliquary, please. Forgive me, blessed saints, but I must carry you from your place of rest. Now come, we have no time to spare. Take the relic to your father. Our families may share no love, but we are of a mind when it comes to the Lord. He will know what to do. That man is a stranger to me. As was our Lord Jesus Christ when he died on the cross for our sins. Help often comes from unexpected hands, brother. Now, follow quickly. into the catacombs. Remain swift and silent. What is my shepherd? My 
shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures and leads me beside the still waters. So I pried the book from his hands and tore the covers off to bring home. I'll be able to afford another slave this harvest season, at the very least. Uh, these Saxons and their books? You'd think they were more precious than their own lives. But if no one lives to speak of what's written down, who will remember it? <laughs> Not to speak of how they treat their dead. Putting bones or pieces of wood inside golden boxes. <laughs> How this honors their god, I'll never understand. Waiting won't make it any easier. not let you pass without experiencing the sting of your wit. Uh, the mood I'm in, you'd best hope for a stinging rather than a lash. <laughs> <laughs> then let's begin. On the Isle of Ely, great riches were won. It was over before this flighting begun. Come, Thorsty. Surely you can do better than that. I've heard of your legend, your grace and prowess. To not have heard it, you'd have to be dense. I feel like you're not taking this seriously, my friend. It's a shame Harald Jarl outshines you so brightly. He outshines us both. He's so sprightly. Weak, I'm afraid. How disappointing. I don't have time for this. Thorstein! You've been far from our shores, but never my thoughts. There's something I must say, my own. <laughs> so formal. Did the crossing scour our friendship from your mind? It did not. 
It's only by friendship that I am brave enough to speak. Tell me then. I'm listening. I tire of raiding, Harold. I want to settle where there's rich, dark soil for the taking. I want to make a place of our own where I can live out my days with my wife. You're young yet, my friend. Plenty of time to grow old with a bouncing infant on its knee. No, my Jarl. I've delayed too long already. Today I search for a ship. I have none to spare. Then I shall purchase one. Commission, perhaps. I hope this folly of yours can withstand a year's wait. <sighs> if that is what it takes. It is no slight to you, my Jarl. My love for you has not waned, but... My love for my wife only grows stronger with each absence. I hope you will bless my journey in time. Go! Woody, keeping those hands of yours busy. Huh, they'll be ready to tie knots in the worst winter storms, I swear. And they're going to bring it all the way from a Kundersund? Definitely not. My parents have never traveled farther than Notfall, and they complained about the food the whole time. Have you told them of your plans to sail west? Not yet. They've woven sails for Thorstein before. No need for them to know that this time will be any different. Not until all our hard work has paid off. Ulf, it is good to see you again. I couldn't miss this chance to sail with a mighty Thorstein now, could I? Ulla, it's been a long time. It has. Time has hardened you, my friend. As it has me. Well, how did it go with Harald? Harald will not stand in our way, but neither will he help us. Oh, at least he could give you his blessing. He did not. Oh, my love, he will come around. His love for you flows deep, but its pull is as strong as the tides. I see you've made good on your promise to find us traveling companions, at least. This group of good-for-nothings? They're only here as ballast. Ah, then find a ballast I've never seen. <laughs> it's a good start, but we will need more men. And the navigator. I know. 
I've gathered a list of names already. Ah, my leather, Stianna. Involder, I need a ship. My wife and I leave for the land across the sea. Uh, Harald won't pay for such a vessel, I'm sure. Did you really fill your pockets that well on your last raid? I have gold enough to cover the cost. Wood, sails and all? Gunhilda's family will provide the sail. The rest I will purchase. Ah, uh, you're a lucky man. I know. Speak with Skarga for a pine mast, then, and yarn for the nails. <laughs> Tell him I'll expect him to be on time with his deliveries in the future. I'll see what I can do. Thorstein, what brings you to my yard? Involder sent me. Oak or pine? I'm sorry, what? Known to shipbuilding, are you? Come with me. You'll learn better by doing. Use that axe to remove the bark from this log. Underneath you will find silken pine, flexible and light, that will bend in the wind. Perfect for a mast. Once you have a sense of the wood, come find me and I will show you another. Tap in the wedges gently. We want this lock to split as straight as possible. That way we will have long hard boards of oak for the hull of your ship to protect you and your fellate. I'll wait for you over there. Planing the wood ensures a tight fit between the boards, leaving no gaps or knots that might give way in the middle of the sea. The smoother the joints, the smoother your journey. Now, which type of wood did Involder send you for? Oak, I think. I believe you may be mistaken, friend. Luckily, I have the patience of Balder himself. Then why did you ask me? You won't forget again, will you? <sighs> Pine for a mast. I'll send your new mast to the shipyard as soon as it's ready.
Are you looking for something? Invader sent me. Of course he did. He tried those nails from Aval's nest, and I bet they fell apart in the salt water. <laughs> I use nothing but pure iron, which is why he hates my prices. But at least you won't find yourself suddenly sailing in a bucket full of holes. <laughs> ah, head inside the shop. You can take a box from the stack against the back wall. But tell him he'll have to pay up front if he wants more. I'm the one funding the construction of this ship. You will be paid in full. I have no doubt. Eventually. Invalder makes ships that sing on the ocean waves. But mundane thoughts of silver and depth never seem to enter his mind. Don't worry, I'll talk to him. Go get some nails. Finally, you return. Now, there's one last step to take. Come with me. Which animal would you like best for your prow? I have three available, so you can choose the spirit that suits your intentions. Uh, you will also need to bring me a blessed charm to put inside the prow. But I won't need it for many months yet. Take a look, and let me know if you have any questions. Tell me about the horse. The horse? A risky choice. But you can count on it to lead you quickly to port, with the proper ritual precautions, of course. Is this the prow you want? I'm not sure. Take your time. Tell me about the serpent. The snake-headed prow will ensure you dominate the waves with disconcerting ease and great stability. Is this the prow you want? Yes. Excellent. Then we can get started. Jorlingan, I need your strength and stability. Protect us on our travels. Thorstein. <sighs> yes? My Jarl, I was childish before. In my joy at seeing you home, I wasn't ready to discuss your departure again so soon. Nor see you gone for good. Please, accept this with my blessing. Unjo, the rune of kinship. And why not? No man has been a truer brother to me than you. It has been an honor to have you in my Fjellach, even if this leg of the trip will be shorter. The day has finally come. And all too soon. Many have come before you. And many will come after. Yet, when I die, it will be your friendship that I recall as I await the opening of Valhalla. There, we will meet again. 
Go then, and the winds take you swiftly to soft lands and great riches. May your name never be forgotten. A fine ship for a fine man. And the finest craftsmanship I've ever laid eyes on. You have blessed us indeed. Treat her well, Thorstein. Oh, my wife will make sure of it. I've never seen a woman more in love with a boat. And I've never seen so fine a sail. If you ever return, I will have worked for her. And I can apprentice myself to Skaga. A sound plan. You still owe me for that last box of nails. Uh, Invoder told me he paid. <laughs> I'm just playing with you. Be well, Thorstein. <laughs> and you. I shall miss your scathing replies, Thorstein. And I'll miss your insufferable arrogance. God smile on you, my friend. I can't take you with us, Sigmund. I'm not risking the lives of my men and wife to these sunstones. You're making a mistake. With Frothy gone, I'm the best navigator you'll find this time of year, and you know it. You've already deceived us once with your tales of magic pebbles. I'm not letting you steer us into rocks again. Without Froda to guide you, you're as good as blind. So you'd rather trust whales and winds than your own fialachi? 
Bjorn was right about you. Try sailing across the sea in this weather. You won't get past the shore. Not without a skilled sailor. You're absolutely right. I do need a navigator. But you weren't one to begin with. Well? No good. Though this betrayal cuts deeper with each navigator we're forced to turn away. He got an offer he couldn't refuse. Wouldn't you choose to sail with a great sea king given the chance? I already am. Regardless, Frode broke his word. Now we have no navigator and no men in the middle of the sailing season. How are we supposed to cross the sea? Trick is waiting for us to not fall with our supplies. He might have heard of someone trustworthy. Not fall folk dread the great waters more than a feral cat. They'll be of no use in the upcoming storm. No. I'll ask my mother. She knows everyone in Eikundarsund. I'll find a clan to join us there. Is it wise for you to go? They might not agree to sail with a woman aboard. I'm sure my charms will outweigh their fears. Rick looks busy with our supplies. Good man. I'll be off then, to find the men we need. Be swift, my love. We'll meet you in Ekundersund once the boat is loaded. Trick. I gather these crates are full of dried cod? They are. And the other ones have hard bread, mead, and wool canvases for the crew. Excellent. You have served us well for many years now, Trick. Faithfully. I can't say it was a pleasure, but you've treated me with respect. I'm grateful for it. Now I hope my debt has been paid. In full. Are you sure I can't tempt you to come with us? Your help would be invaluable. Shackles here versus shackles across the sea? Tough choice to make. Oh, you misunderstand me. I free you, here and now. But if you return to me willingly as a slave, you can purchase a place amongst my crew. Once we're established in the land across the sea, I'll free you for good and take you as my partner in trade. Not many slaves would get an offer like that. Well then, let's get these supplies on board before the storm hits us.
legs are faster than two. Mother will be happy to see me. It's difficult to set oneself apart in a sea of Viking-themed media, but it was the challenge marketing and art teams faced when creating AC Valhalla's visual identity. Together, they designed logos and crests, selected fonts and colours and interfaces. As a result, 50 different logos were created for the brand to find the right fit. The Two Axes logo on the bottom right of this picture... They must have been exhausted. The turquoise colour was added early on as a nod to the aurora borealis that illuminate the Norwegian skies. Two axes for dual wielding form the A of Assassin's Creed. At their end, the outline of a longhouse rooftop with delicate engravings to underline Norse crafting skills. Finally, the faded grid in the background serves as a reminder of the Animus simulation.
been visited by Goddess Freya herself. Come, embrace your mother. Mother, it's been a while. Far too long. The sheep miss you, Gunhilda. They can't bear the thought of losing you to the land across the sea. They might not have to. Whatever is troubling you, my love, we will remedy it. We need more men. The clan we recruited has decided to remain on land. We're left with no navigator nor crew. Some clans have just returned from the sea. I've seen them camp nearby. I can take you to them, but you'll have to be persuasive. Do you doubt my abilities, mother? <laughs> I wouldn't dare. You've always had wits sharper than Gunknir. I can only hope that just like Odin's spear, you will return to me. You know we must go where our opportunities lie. This land is overcrowded. We want our own fields, to harvest our own crops. All right, I won't push any further. Your father will be heartbroken. And you won't be? My heart broke the day you left our home. We've arrived. Go on, love. Thank you, mother. Free men of Akundarsund, heed my call. We are looking for those brave enough to defy the whale road with us. You, will you come with us? It's bad luck to sail with a woman. I won't sail with you. Good. We'd have no use for your lack of judgment on board. Bondi, join us. My men and I have just returned from years of Vikinger with Guthrum's war band. Uh, it's time for us to tend to our crops and see our children grow. When do you leave? Today. Have you sailed before? My husband sailed with Harald Jarl himself. He sailed enough for both of us. I've learned to be wary of boastful spirits. Your word alone isn't enough. How can I convince you to accompany us? Well, why are you leaving our northern land? Our crops can't grow in the dead of winter. We've tried everything. I've never had trouble growing my crops, regardless of the cold. Maybe you don't use the right techniques. My husband is a second son. If we were to stay, our farm will pass to his eldest brother and we'll be left with nothing. I understand that all too well. My men and I have found this temporary campsite, but we've got nowhere to go. Then come with us. It does sound tempting. Would you have enough supplies for all my men? My husband is loading the mead and the dried fish aboard our ship as we speak. We'll have plenty for everyone. How will we be sleeping? We'll protect ourselves with wool canvases. Mm-hmm. That should be enough. How will you find your way across the sea? My husband has met with a sea rider using these rocks he called sunstones. Now tell your husband this man is a liar. Sunstones are rarely used for a reason. We'll observe the signs Midgard has given us. The birds, the currents, the stars. The spirits will show us the way. We need someone to interpret it. You're right. I can help you around these shores, but in the midst of the wave world, we'll need an expert. We? Oui. Have you decided to come? I have. You speak true and my men are ready to settle. I'm honored. Gather your men and your things. I'll take you to our ship. I should know better than to ever doubt you. You excel once again. There's little to stand in your way when you aim for the sky. Stieger's clan will accompany us, <sighs> but we remain short a navigator. I thought of someone while loading the ship. Who? You'll need to trust me. But we must reach Haloya first, and fast. The storm is imminent. I know where Haloya is. Then lead the way.
We must exit the fjord. Sail right. Now straight ahead towards the setting sun. Now, get closer to the shore, but make sure to keep the rocks on your left and the land on your right. We don't want to damage the hull. Embrace the shore until you see a tower of ice. There, the ice tower. Sail towards it! But beware, we're in shallow waters now. Well done. Now we're going to pass a small island filled with sea lions. Past the Sea Lion's Island, our destination is ahead.
Do not lose your course through the storm. Do you see the light? Go towards it. It's our destination. shouldn't be here. Bjorn, brother, I've come to... Brother? When have we ever been brothers? We were in the same Felak, Bjorn. We've sworn oaths to respect, support, and protect each other. They still hold true for me. Those oaths were broken long before my exile, Thorstein, by both of us. You might have forgotten, but I've had years of solitude to remember. Ah, your scorn would be the death of us all. I haven't forgotten, but I refuse to let the past haunt my future. Maybe you should do the same. We need you, Bjorn. Join us. Lead us through the salted mountains. Is this a trick? Why come to me? Can't you trust that not everyone is deceitful? No other sea rider tames the waves like you do. Now that I can believe. Take me to your ship then, and we'll leave this wretched place. I see you've made a true sea king of yourself. It wasn't always pleasant, but I haven't been idle. It must be nice to have Harald's support. Mostly Gunhilda's. But yes. Gunhilda! You haven't changed. Still That's enough is... from you. Leave us. As merciless as the northern sea. I know what you're going to say. Yet it didn't stop you from making such a foolish decision. You would have never agreed. And with good reason. How are you so quick to forget? I'm not. I don't trust him. Neither do I. But he's in that boat as well. He won't put us all in danger. And after that? After that? We'll part ways. The Isle of Britannia has plenty of land to spare. Oh, may the gods hear you.
Praise be to God, the Most High. Glory of glory, Lord of lords. Help me to show your grace and forgiveness to those who need it most. Guthrum Jarl approaches. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Elridge, are you done speaking with your god for now? My dialogue with him is constant, my lord, even if my lips are not moving. My lord this, my lord that. Ah, oh, you Saxons are quick to bend the knee. Perhaps it's why you make such excellent prisoners. And yet King Alfred's army of Saxons has you surrounded. Yes, well. I had expected him to send for you, but five months and more he has left you here with no word. Perhaps you are not as precious to him as you led me to believe. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit which is in him? Or perhaps he finds your habit of quoting dead men as insufferable as I do. I doubt that very much, my lord. Come, walk with me. It must be almost time for you to pray again. I'll uh, speak plainly. I've kept my men from pillaging Chippenham so that Alfred will have no quarrel with me should he retake his home. I see. Do you? If he bests us, I will be at your mercy instead of you at mine. Can I trust you to speak on my behalf, or do Saxons cling to their grudges as dearly as Vidar? Christ demands we show others the mercy he has already shown us. You have nothing to fear from me, my lord. Well, we shall see. You served under Alfred for many years. Tell me, how does he keep the loyalty of his men? After so many years of defeat, surely his soldiers would join another army. King Alfred's role has been ordained by God. To desert him would be to go against divine will. There are no contests of strength, no challenges to his rule. Why would there be? He alone is destined to lead us until God chooses otherwise. <laughs> there may be something to this religion of yours after all. going on here? No. The relic. It's gone. I want every Saxon in this place searched head to toe. Wait. Remember your place, Saxon. These people have been here since the siege began. They've no reason to steal, not now, and nowhere to flee if they did. You accuse my men? I accuse no one. Let me speak with those present. I will find the thieves. No. You will return to your cell immediately. I will discover who is responsible before Alfred hears of it and decides to retake Chippenham by force. One of these people must have seen something. My apologies, but did you happen to witness anyone exiting the church with items made of gold or silver? Surely I did. Some Saxons came here and took everything they could, carrying it all off to the butcher's house, next to the market. That seems strange. Good Christians would have no reason to take what is theirs already. Are you questioning my honor? Merely making an observation. Thank you for your candor. Tell me, brother, did you see who stole from the chapel? Don't ask me. Please, just go.
Young one, did you see anyone carrying items of gold from the chapel? I saw some men in furs and armor hiding things under their cloaks. They were talking about leaving Chippenham at night and said the statue would be too heavy. Then they went to the big house next to the great hall. You have done our lord a tremendous service, child. Thank you. Guthrum should know what I found. Sister, did you see who took the relic and the rest of the gold? I saw nothing! Now leave me alone! I need to find out what happened to the relic. The child said the thieves went to the big house next to the great hall. Guarding the food carefully now, but we should have enough for two or three days. Uh, we'll leave tonight then, before Alfred's war dogs arrive. Gather the gold into sacks and let no one see you. It shall be as you say, Bjornjarn. I like the sound of that. I should exit the same way I came in. Ja, maar we hebben het 
My lord, I found the missing gold and the relic of evil. I told you to return to your cell, Elrich. I will not brook disobedience, not from my men and not from you. Bjorn is organizing your men to flee Chippenham by night and leave you to face Alfred's wrath alone. What? If you are lying to me, monk. Now return to yourself. Do not let me lay eyes on you until you come at my command. Yes, my lord. I need to return to my room. Guthrum abhors disobedience. Get inside, monk. I won't be held accountable by Guthlum if you disobey him again. Good morrow, Bjorn. Have you come to join me in prayer? Never, monk. Guthrum Jarl wants to speak with you in the longhouse. Bring your golden idol. You'll need it before long. Bjorn is waiting. I should not stoke his impatience. It's time to travel again, old friend. This relic carries a shard of the one true cross, if you doubt its potency. I doubt every lie that falls from your lips. Asher Guthrum, you made it trouble for me and my men. Trouble brought upon you by your own actions. And by a monk who doesn't know when to keep his mouth shut. Only after we admit our faults and beg forgiveness can we hope to atone for them. Spare me your sermons. I won't forget the debt you owe me. And neither will you if you have a mind to keep living. I wonder what Guthrum wants. <laughs> You wished to see me, my lord. Your king has finally sent for you. Alfred has delivered the terms of my surrender and I have accepted. You are no longer my prisoner. Thank you, my lord. I will remember you in my prayers. One moment, Elrich. I admit the insights I gleaned into the Saxon mind through our discussions made Alfred's terms easier to swallow. He wants me to be baptized, to become a Christian king. It is you who convinced me that doing so would increase my power, not diminish it. Of course, any who come to the Lord are welcome. Hopefully in time, you will appreciate the many other gifts God offers beyond mere power as well. Mere power? Hold your tongue, monk. With the treaty signed, your usefulness is at its end. Leave by the main gate. A horse awaits you. Now go before I change my mind. Yes, my lord. I'd better meet the messenger before Guthrum changes his mind.
it is King Alfred who must claim this great victory. Though, of course, God strengthens his hand. Brother Elrich, I was told to wait on you. King Alfred desires to see you at once. And let us not keep the good king waiting. What news in Winchester since Christmas? <laughs> Too much for me to say. But the battle at Eddington was won, and soon the countryside will be free for all good Wessex men to till and plough as before. For so many years of war, the land seems all but untouched. Yea, nature's beauty has taken not nearly so hard a beating as we have. It's a pleasure to see it again as a free man at last. What news of the king? How does he celebrate his triumph? With more plans and late-night discussions. I've never seen a man smile so little when reporting such a great victory. He's right to be wary. Guthrum is not tamed yet. <sighs> if you say so. His ferocity seemed to be at an ebb when I delivered King Alfred's terms. I pray you are right. It would be well if we are done with war for his sake and ours. I'll drink to that, brother! King Alfred awaits you inside. Thank you for ensuring my safe return. Alfred will be waiting on my return. Oh, no, it's so important. 
Nicht nur Worte. Brother Elrich! You are returned to me at last. By God's grace, it is so. And by mine. I was the one who included your safe passage in the terms of Guthrum's surrender. Then I am grateful to you as well, my lord. And you have returned with the relic of Ely. I was ready to chase the Danes to recover it, but I see you have the matter well in hand. With Guthrum's aid, yes. You speak kindly of him. Even after so many months as his captive, Truly, you exemplify Christ's grace. Now come, we have a baptism to plan. The baptism will soon begin. in paradisum. Pax eterna es... Ut congregentur ad Marcus et dixit ad vulgares de terra superbus est lo venite audite verbum domini in nostri Jesu Nazareno eras. That's why I've chosen the name Adel Skan. I trust you agree it is fitting. Yal Guthrum, to have you come in peace to our city at last fills my heart with joy. You seem well, Elrich. Freedom agrees with you. As a life in the service of Christ, we agree with you. Indeed. Let us delay this happy occasion no longer. I should take my place amongst the faithful. Vis ad vitam in greedy, serve a mandate. Diligus dominum diem tuum ex toto cortu, et ex toto animatua, et ex totament tua, et proximum tuum sicut typesum. Uh, amen. Axapi signum crucis tam in front, form in cord, soon fidem clustium perceptorum, et talis esto moribus, ab tempum deum as possis. Amen. 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 Escaping the Isle of Ely with the relic, I was terrified. I was raised on a farm, then sent to the monastic school. So I had never seen anything else, nor been anything else. And suddenly, I carried the weight of the souls of all my brothers and sisters in Christ, who had sacrificed themselves so that I might live to protect their sacred relic. 
It was unbearable. So when I was at my most weak and weary, I turned to my lord and, as promised, he gave me rest. For that, I will be grateful to the end of my days. Brother Elrich, I have need of you. Of course, my king. I serve at your command. Then follow me at once. I apologize for my coming unannounced, but you will understand I needed this matter to remain discreet. Please, no apologies are necessary. You see, time is of the essence, Elrich. I'm at war. At war with the Danes, yes, but also with the nobles of my realm. Surely you would not go to war against our fellows? Not anymore. It is a political war I speak of. A war of the minds. Stubborn ones at that. We have no shortage of stubbornness within the church as well. These nobles refuse to understand that we must be united if we are to remain victorious over the Danes. And a united front means one person must speak for the many. But they see it as a grab for power, as if giving me the upper hand means undermining their authority. All I do, I do only for the survival of our land, our people, for the kingdoms, whether it be Wessex, Northumbria, Mercia, even East Anglia. Our faith and our values are the same. It is not me you must convince, my king. Without you, we would already be a faded memory overridden by the heathen's bloodshed. It's our victory over Guthrum and the other Danes has given the Witten misplaced confidence. I cannot let their arrogance be our downfall. We need to be prepared for the next attack and all the ones to come. What role could I play in convincing them? You attended my court for many years. You know my heart. And I know you are loyal to our lord above all others, as do they. They will not listen to me, but they cannot doubt our lord's will. We need the bishop. Convince him to speak in my favor at the Witten. The other lords will have no choice but to approve my requests. I am certain God will aid me in this endeavor. I've yet to meet Bishop Danevolf. Did he take Tunbjort's old residence? Of course. You haven't been here since the reconstruction began. I'll lead you. This city is a superb example of the burrs I want to build all over Wessex, and eventually all across the land. With strongholds like Winchester no more than a day's ride from every village, the common people will be protected. I've always loved these ruins. They're a perfect reminder of how any great nation will crumble when its people are divided. Yet some of the city's walls are built on top of Roman laid stone. You have a sharp eye, Elrich. You see, the heathens are less likely to notice our fortifications if the walls we build them on have been there all along. It's King Alfred. King Alfred in our street. Welcome. Oh, welcome, Lord. There he is. Think I can ask his highness to fix up my outhouse? You better watch your mouth if you don't want his guards to knock you over. <laughs> I do that well enough on my own. I take infinite pride in our minster. The first church of my kingdom. It's stunning. Though I admit... My heart yearns more for the simple comfort of your private sanctuary at Chippenham. They serve different purposes. As the heart of the Diocese of Winchester, this church must welcome all who seek our Lord. I hope to expand it one day, but my priorities lie elsewhere for now. My Lord! My Lord! What is it, child? My mum is ill. She won't get up. Please, oh please, help her! Take me to her. She's at the infirmary. I told her, I said, Mum, you're burning up. But she didn't want to leave the house. So I took her hand and we walked to see the sisters. But they say there's nothing they can do. 
Then I saw you, and I knew you could help. You're the king. My mum's told me you're close to God. You are closer than me, according to the very words spoken by our Lord. I never close, handsome man. It's the king. Have I died, Lord. King Alfred's come to help us. Bless the Lord. We are saved. Elrich. In your days as a healer, have you seen this type of ailment before? I would have to take a closer look, but I trust our sisters can provide the best care for her. Oh, my king? Am I dreaming? Shh. Save your strength. Oh, I... I can feel myself. Drifting away. I will see that your daughter is well taken care of. Should the need arise. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. And be gracious to you. Amen. 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 Oh. Thank you, my king. Thank you. You are a good king. I try to be there for my people. I cannot bear watching more innocent souls perish. I've built walls and bridges. I've seen my vision come to life. And yet we are still in harm's way. That's why I need the Witten's approval. We must build as many burrs, our strongholds, as necessary, spread across the land, with each of these strongholds overseen by trained men, able to protect us when the time comes. You've thought this through. I have. And yet I am being stifled by the very men supposed to support me. Thanks to our mills, I can ensure my people aren't out of bread. That is, only if I keep away from the loaves. I'm more fit to rule than to bake, I'm afraid. We've reached the bishop's residence. This is where I leave you. The nobles are waiting for me at the Witten Hall. I'm counting on you, Elrich. I will get his approval, my lord. Our future depends on it. As King Alfred is an historical figure, artists and modelers had a lot of documentation to help with his design. With pre-established features, age, height, backstory, kept as accurate as possible, his appearance had to represent his royal demeanour, but also his weakened state. He suffered from Crohn's disease. This contrast was made through the design of his clothes, hair and facial features. As one of the main characters in AC Valhalla, seen up close in multiple cinematics, it was imperative to design every detail meticulously. So much so that it took ten days to design his hair.
So messengers. At my school on that day, they be creepy. Yet savvy, I have two neighbors. Brother, I'm looking for the bishop. What for? It is a subject I need to discuss with the bishop alone, at once. Suit yourself. He's over there reading the day's missives. Father, your king needs you. It is customary for people to introduce themselves, young man. I'm Brother Elrich of Runkwuda Abbey. You saved our precious relic from the Isle of Ely. I... yes. Yes, I did. It was such a long time ago. Yet here you stand. What brings you to Winchester? King Alfred seeks the Lord's support to implement his laws with the nobles. Far be it for any man to speak in the name of the Lord. What are these laws King Alfred is pushing? If he is to protect Wessex against the heathen threat, King Alfred needs the lords to trust his strategies to ensure we will withstand other attacks. What kind of strategies? He wants to extend the stronghold system he began with Winchester. He sees these burrs as the best answer against the heathen attacks, a way for every man and woman in the land to seek refuge. But how can I be sure that I will be helping our Lord and not merely supporting one man's pride? King Alfred is a man of God. He wishes to unite the kingdoms through common faith in our Lord. I can't deny that having a pious man at the helm of our kingdom has helped us spread the good word indeed. You have made a convincing case, brother. I believe Alfred is genuine in his intentions. I will discuss this matter with my brothers and come to a decision. My fellow good men, please heed my words. What more can you possibly have to say? We won the war. Let us lick our wounds and go home to our wives. We've won a single battle by the skin of our teeth. We must be ready when the heathens come back, because they will. What if we just pay them to leave? Paying the Danes tribute will only encourage them to stay and ask for more. Can't you see? I'm proposing a system that will allow us to be protected at all times. An army year round. Not just for my kingdom's sake, but for all of our sakes. 
Oh, your ambitions are very clear, Lord Elfred. Indeed. And we trust you to lead our men. This is preposterous. Have I not earned your trust? My king, Bishop Danewolf wishes to speak. Bishop, please. I have come to voice the Church's support. Our Lord's will is in alignment with Alfred's intentions. If you are men of faith, you will give your assent. Noble men, what say you? Despite my doubts, I will not go against our Lord's wishes. You have my support. And ours as well, for now. Let it be known that the Witten agreed. To prove my good faith, allow me to demonstrate the efficacy of my strongholds. Please follow me. What have you got in mind? I'll take them to the beacon. When my watchmen respond, they will see that this system works. Elrich, I, Elrich, I am immensely grateful for what you've done for me today. Of course. I am on you. Tell me, how could I ever repay my gratitude? Well, I must admit, I feel like my purpose is elsewhere. What do you mean? I've lived with the Norsemen. I've built bonds with them. Seeing Adelston, Guthrum, baptized, showed me my true mission. I understand their ways, their thinking. The Danes are not ultimately lost, my lord. We can still save them, convert them. But I can't do it from Runkwood Abbey. Your devotion is inspiring. I'll see to it that you be relocated to another minster, Elrich. I have just the one in mind. Thank you, my lord. I'll go. My king! You can't! It's beneath you! If I won't do it myself, then I if I won't do it myself, then I cannot expect my people to. May this light be the symbol of a new beginning. The people will rise and take back the land that is rightfully theirs.
The sky should remain clear for this afternoon. It's a shame they did not marry at dawn. Light brings beauty to the fore. Is she anyone I know? You can bid her good day the next time you spy a mirror. <laughs> Never fear. I'll have plenty of time for beauty while I help Edith prepare. You should not let Trig labor alone too long, lest he fail his husbandly duties at a crucial moment. <laughs> I need to spend some time in the shop. And then there's the matter of your gift. The closest kept secret in all our twenty years of marriage. I'm impressed you've been able to hold your tongue. You surprise me every day. I thought it time I returned the favor, at least once. You already have. I may have grumbled when you woke me, but the sunrise was especially beautiful. Tomorrow then, as well? <laughs> Let's get through today first. If there's a trigger at me and till far of Franca's drundum, send him here a morgan. I'll wait knocker till far. Batnat hit see the stuff. Mini back it out days. Hick up. What will you It seems that Vikings and Anglo-Saxons could roughly understand each other at the time as both of their languages sounded similar and had diverged only a few centuries before. To help actors during the recordings, the voice design team relied on linguists such as runologist Maya Bakval of Uppsala University. Uppsala. Well, it makes me kind of happy, that word. Lines were then written in three versions, in English, for context, in the original language, Latin, Old Norse, Old English, and in phonetics for accurate pronunciation. Pronunciation, like that. Interestingly, it felt quite natural for Icelandic actors to pronounce Old Norse. Well, they wouldn't need a dictionary if their great-great-great-great-grandparents were around to translate, though that would be very unlikely.
Rick started unloading without me, I see. Heavy labor before getting married. Your bride won't want to seal the covenant with a kiss. If you don't want me to sweat so much, you can help me move this wares to our stall. <laughs> I give you your freedom and you see fit to order me around. You're lucky I've no more expeditions to tempt you with. Ah, Edith would never have it. She means to settle and raise a fine crop of golden-haired angles. I've never dared ask what drew you to her. I know there are many fine Norse women who were devastated when you announced your betrothal. She brought me to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I know that doesn't seem like much to some, yet she also thinks differently. Every conversation is a discovery of where our family traditions overlap and where they differ. A meeting of hearts and minds, then. You are doubly blessed. Thrice, Horsi, for your friendship and our new trade partnership. Your hard work made me a rich man. It's only fair I return the favor. I'll have to make a few sales today to cover the cost of Trick's wedding gift. Welcome to Jorvik. I have fine wools from across the sea, mead and honey from the lands to the south, and warm winter pelts from the northern tribes. Good day. I've traveled from the Caliphate in search of gifts for the wedding of my daughter. I need 16 ells of wool, the pelt of a large bear, and three pots of summer honey. I hear your prices are excellent. You've heard true. Let me tally the cost. Good day. I've traveled from the Caliphate in search of gifts for the wedding of my daughter. I need 16 ells of wool, the pelt of a large bear, and three pots of summer honey. I hear your prices are excellent. You've heard true. Let me tally the cost. For all those goods, I would ask a mere two ounces of gold. You drive a hard bargain, but I've been assured your quality is second to none. All right, I'll pay your price. I hope you'll send others to see me as well. Good day to you, sir. We're looking for donations to help the sick and the poor. Do you have anything you could offer? A noble cause, to be certain. Let me think. Have this season's profits and a fine fur cloak brought all the way from the court of King Harald in Alrekstad. Such generosity! May the Lord bless you and keep you, my brother. Bjorn! It's been many months. How goes the northern trade? Not well. The pigs are savages, and the angles are little better. They all want something for nothing, with no middle ground to be had. Surely that's the nature of business, my friend. Finding a bargain that will work for everyone. Not when I owe money to Goose from it isn't. Can I count on you, Thorstein? If his men come for me, will you stand by my side? Take the cloak pins from that shelf and sell them in the marketplace. They'll fetch a fine price for little effort. Enough to keep Guthrum happy while I find buys for my other wares, to be sure. You've saved me again, brother. Thank you.
искаш пио от тя, фраг, бе? Hello, I would like to commission a runestone to commemorate many years of happiness and success with my wife. A fine choice, with many options. I was afraid of that. Show me. First, you will need to select the type of stone. I'll go with limestone. An unusual choice, but no less versatile. It will draw the attention you seek, to be sure. Is that the type of stone you want? I'm not sure. Think well, my friend. Such an opportunity comes but once a lifetime. First, you will need to select the type of stone. Granite, please. A solid choice. It will weather the elements for generations to come. Is that the type of stone you want? Yes, it is. Then let us continue. Now you will need to choose what you want engraved on your rune stone. Love me. I love you, Gunhilda. Kiss me. I know you well. A declaration for the ages. Is this the inscription you want? Maybe not. Did you have something else in mind? Now you will need to choose what you want engraved on your rune stone. Gunhilda loved me when I was in Stavanger. Since she loves you still, it must be some loving indeed. Is this the inscription you want? Maybe not. Did you have something else in mind? Now you will need to choose what you want engraved on your rune stone. Love conquers all. Let us too yield to love. Sometimes the words we need best come from another's tongue. Is this the inscription you want? Yes. I'll get started on it right away. Your wife is sure to be happy with the results. All that remains is to confirm the design you would like me to carve for you. Gladly. Tell me about this style of carving. The cross represents the Christians' redemption through the death of their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is a symbol of faith, hope, and eternal love. Do you want a Christian cross for your wife? I'll be here if you have any more questions. This looks like a nicely hewn runestone. It is. Tall and proud. A runestone will declare your words to the world for all the ages. It is a symbol of strength, wealth, and remembrance. Do you want a runestone for your wife? A good, solid runestone will soon be yours then. I am certain your wife will be delighted with the results. Then we are all done. Well, you made it. And it seems you washed. Both admirable qualities in the husband. I try to hold myself to some kind of standard. Mm, the trick is to let it slip, little by little, as the years go by. Is this truly your advice on how to begin a marriage? No, my friend. It's advice on how to end one.
When the threads get tangled like that, you need to take a walk to cool your head. One small move and you'll need to cut the whole cloth free. Easy to say, harder to do. I swear, some days the shuttle has a mind of its own. Those are the days you most need to rest. Come back with a clear head and you'll find the shuttle is more agreeable as well. What a vision stands before me. But of course, my wife had an excellent canvas to work with. <laughs> Ever the flatterer, Thorstein. Don't you know I'm soon to be a married woman? Which is why I must get all of my compliments in now, before you turn as haggard as Gunhilda. <laughs> One of these days, she won't forgive you for these jests. Then on that day, I hope the gods themselves will intervene. Father Eldridge, Trig brought me to one of those Christian gatherings last week. I didn't understand a word of it, but your conviction was riveting. You honor me, Thorstein. Praise from the merchant with a silver tongue speaks volumes to my success in communicating God's glory. It's a task you are most well suited for. I try, my son. Brothers and sisters, we are gathered here today to witness a merging of the traditions of Northumbria and Norway, as Trigg and Edith begin their new life together. Here, where Edith's mother and father are buried, may they give their blessing to this holy union as they watch from within the Lord's sight. Love is patient and kind. It is not boastful or proud. It always protects always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Trigg, do you take Edith to be your wife, here in the sight of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? I do. Edith, do you take Trigg to be your husband, with Almighty God and your parents' souls as witness? I do. Then let no man separate what God has joined together. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. May Freya bless you with many children, and Thor protect you from life's storms. Thank you, my friends. I'm so happy for them. With any luck, their marriage will be as long and prosperous as ours. I don't know about that. There's a new baker in Coppergate who's quite caught my eye. Then I suppose I'd best learn to bake. <laughs> Thorstein! I've been looking everywhere. I said you would vouch for me, but they want the gold now! Slow down, Bjorn. We'll talk to them together. I fear they want to do more than talk, brother. My husband and I are on our way home. This won't take long, I promise. Keep that delicious stew of yours by the fire, and I'll be back before you can lay out the bowls. If you don't have him home before moonrise, I will come and find you. You won't like what happens after that. Please, Thorstein, quickly! Keep the hearth warm for me, my love. Ich fand Havo Kanesta Ig, and put with Hwao Fraxe Elderman, if Brida Sin. Godas Yifan Sin, ya wis? You coddle him, my love. He's a grown man, not an errant child. Slaves talk, Gunilda. If he returns to his family and says we mistreated him, I might find myself in a duel. No duels until you've worked on your swordsmanship.
Where are you? Thorstein? Thorstein, wait! I should know better than to ever doubt you. Thorstein, where are you? Let me help you! How are you so quick to forget? I don't trust him. What happened? I was just... I can't remember. Don't be shy! Where am I? Jotunheim, land of the giants. Loki thought it would be fun to play a trick on you humans. I need a word with him. <laughs> Feisty! Don't waste your time. Loki's always up to no good. He probably did it so I wouldn't notice him stealing my stuff. And the scoundrel was right. This must be a dream. Ah, I wish it was. Then I wouldn't be stuck cleaning up Loki's messes anymore. Come. Hold on. Loki, Jotunheim. Are you supposed to be Thor, the giant slayer? What do you mean, supposed to be? I am Thor. I'll have to take your word for it. My mind feels like someone's poked holes in it. Uh, do not worry about that. We will have to restore your memory to find out where you belong anyway. But first, you must help me. What could I possibly do that the God of the people cannot? I need you to find my gauntlets and belt. Without them, I cannot use my hammer. And without my hammer, I would not last long in a village full of giants. So I need you to handle it. Once you get my things, I will take you to the well of Mimir. Easy. <sighs> for you? You will not be harmed. God's honor. But I will be waiting for you here. Just in case.
ég megg og afströng við þau, andsvara eigi. Giants. seem much more peaceful than in the sagas. That must be Thor's belt. This barrel seemed refreshing, and a great place to hide something. Fólk átti að koma til ásjárn annarar. What's your problem with those giants? They seem pretty peaceful to me. They belittled me! <laughs> All right, let's go. Are we going to Midgard? No, oh, to me as well. I must be certain Midgard is where you're meant to be. Mimir will know. His name sounds familiar. Uh, as far back as I can remember, my father Odin has craved knowledge and wisdom of any kind. But he came to be obsessed with his future, and more especially his own downfall. So he too drank the well's magical water. But to access it, he had to sacrifice his eye to Mimir, the well's guardian. I see. Pay a toll to acquire what you seek. Exactly. You must be prepared. You won't get out of there the same as you've entered. Do you know what you will sacrifice? It will take some thought.
Passaðu ykkur að skýta þetta. Here we are. Off you go. You're not coming with me. Do you really need more hand-holding? <laughs> go. I will wait for you. Oh, and be respectful. Mimir doesn't have the same tolerance for mortals that I do. <laughs> Why? Why? What happened? I sacrificed the only thing I had. My hammer, my human vessel. <laughs> Mimir didn't grant you the knowledge you sought? <laughs> I wanted to best my enemies. To see the looks on their faces as all their plans came to naught. Now I'm trapped here. I can never return to Midgard. What's the point of outwitting your foes if they'll never even know it? Ah, I see. Be careful. Learn from my mistake. Don't sacrifice anything you will regret. Enter, Thorstein of Midgard. I know what you seek. Reveal your sacrifice, and your desire may be granted. As I know nothing of my past, and own nothing of value, I can only sacrifice my future. Reaching the great hall of Odin upon my death would be the greatest honor. Wise Mimir, I sacrifice to you my chance to ever enter Valhalla. Thorstein of Midgard, you have chosen to sacrifice any hope to fight alongside Odin at Ragnarok. Let it be so. You may drink from my waters now and remember your past. The betrayal of someone close has brought you here. I... died? Bjorn... Bjorn did this to me. Why? You have the answers you sought. No, I need to know. What happened to Gunhilda? You cannot drink again. You have nothing left to sacrifice. Wait, wait! M Mimir, come back! Now that I finally remember your face, is seeing you again the future I gave up? dead all along? There was a high chance, yes. I do not know of death as you humans do. To us gods, death is only part of an endless cycle of rebirth. 
Until Ragnarok, that is. Well, I don't have that privilege. What am I to do now? I can take you to the Norns. Only they will know where you ought to go. I'm tired of being thrown around like a wet cloth. Is this the god's humor? Only Loki's. I hate that he's using my people against me. You were caught in the middle, and I am sorry. <laughs> Your excuses won't bring me back to life. There! My faithful goats Tangrisnir and Tangnjostr will take us to Asgard, to the Norns. This is your chariot? <laughs> you cannot see its true form. Do not be fooled by my goat's sides. They are mightier than a hundred giants. <laughs> Shall we go? Yes. I can't stand the sight of this place anymore. to see for myself. I've come to seek the Norns' counsel and find an end to this meandering. <laughs> of course. Another victim of Loki's mischief. I understand your frustration. We cannot approach the Norns, nor the threats they weave. These cats seem to have approached them just fine. Mighty creatures, are they not? Loki brought them here. They entangled the threats and made a mess. But no matter. Your threat followed its course. Nothing can ever change your destiny. Trust me. I've tried. What about my wife, Gunhilda? Do you know where she is? I wouldn't care to know. You are in Asgard, talking to the Allfather. And all you can think of is your wife. You mortals have such one-track minds. Take your questions to Freya, along with these cats of hers. She'll know how to indulge you. <sighs> all right then. How do I get out of here? It will take longer for me to explain than to just send you away. Good luck. must be leading to her. following them, or are they following me?
Freya must know that cats are better creatures than people. Never imagined I'd spend my afterlife leading a herd of cats. Surprised they're even awake. I'm covered in cat hair now. My cats, come here, my darlings. I've looked all over for you. I could have been a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little of 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 the Allfather sent me to see you. I've died, and I have nowhere to go. I see. Odin knows I cannot resist a stray in need. Listen, darling. Everyone has somewhere they ought to be. Even you. Follow me. But I've given up all hope of entering Valhalla. Then you were never destined to reach Valhalla. How so? I lived a good and honorable life. Don't I deserve an honorable death? Maybe, just not in Odin's great hall. You shall accompany me to Folkvanger, my home. Will my wife be there? Have you seen Gunhilda? I do not know, but if it's her fate, she will join you there. I'd go through a thousand deaths if it meant seeing her again. Your love is true and strong. Your fates must be intertwined. All hope isn't lost, but I do not make promises of outcomes I cannot control. If Loki hadn't interfered with my thread... You would have ended up just where you are now, with or without Loki's hand. How can you tolerate his misdeeds? It's the one thing I never understood! We are not to question it. It's just who he is. Loki, just as any of us, is a part of the greater scheme. But I know how you must feel. I've wanted to rip that smug smile of his from his face more than once. Almost went through with it one day. He must have done something awful. The worst thing he could possibly do. He stole my dear Brisinger men. One of your cats? No, my necklace. Oh. My most precious possession. I'd give anything for it. And I did. Because of Loki, a hundred men gave their lives to Odin that day. But it was written. We cannot dwell on it. So I never had a choice. Exactly. You understand. These doors will take you to Foldvanger, my kingdom. Afterlife of the slain and righteous. Just as luxurious as Odin's great hall. Thank you.